On this episode of Inch Relations, Rob and I discuss the upcoming August 17th deadline and make some predictions. Join us. This is Industry Relations, a podcast that's at the intersection of real estate and technology from an insider's perspective with Rob Hahn and Greg Robertson. Hi, everybody. This is Greg, and I wanted to give a quick shout out to our newest sponsor, CoreLogic. There has never been a time when it's been more crucial for real estate agents to demonstrate their value to their clients, and CoreLogic has all the tools for them to do so. One Home has generated over 17 million a unique users who are exploring listing and neighborhood data. Their invitation only client portal has also amassed 2.3 billion listing views and their new photo AI search helps turn clients of visual aspirations into reality. For agents on the go, there's MLS Touch, uh, which is their top rated real estate app in the app store, which gives agents uh, instant access to critical MLS data wherever they are and also can be branded for collaboration as a client uh, version. Uh, Next up is Realist. Realist gives agents expert level analysis of properties, which helps their clients make smarter decisions and also can help them with their lead generation efforts. All this is underpinned by Matrix, the industry's leading MLS system. Currently, CoreLogic is rolling out Matrix 12, which will have a brand new interface that works perfect for mobile and desktop. Lots of great stuff happening at CoreLogic. Uh, don't forget an update from your favorite rep, whether that's Rick, Todd, Kim, Lauren, or the rest of the crew, or visit their website. You can look at the link in the show notes. My thanks again for CoreLogic for sponsoring Industry Relations. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Industry Relations with Rob and Greg. This is your co-host, the notorious Rob. And as always, with me, the fabulous Greg Robertson. Hola, Rob. What you gonna do when... I can't can't do that. (laughs) When the Robertson mania comes for you, brother. Yes. (laughs) It's a Randy Savage kind of impersonation. Hulk Hogan, I think. I mean, I I know I sound lucky like him. But, uh, you know, there was a small... This was an eventful week in the outside of real estate, you know. There, there were some things that happened. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Richard Simmons died. I wrote exactly. about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bob Newhart. Shan- Bob Rest Newhart. In peace, Bob Newhart. Shannon Dortry. I mean, you know, it's a uh, yeah sad yeah. time for the country. Yeah, exactly. But uh, we're not going to talk about that because you know, like last week, as fun as that was, you know. Very little real estate content, let's be honest. Yeah. Well, I was look, you know, and I'll be honest with you, Rob. I was looking at right before we got on here. I'm looking yeah. at our numbers there, yeah. and not not the most popular no. industry relations no, episode. It's, but uh, it's fine. we needed it's the break, fine. right? Yeah. You and I needed the break. There. It's fine. Um, but uh, before we begin, uh, can we get an update on on, on the? Oh board? yes, yes. So I, you know, I I do the weigh-ins this morning and. Drum roll. Drum roll. 11.5. Boom. Woo-hoo. Nice. So I'm kind of excited about that. So we're getting into some some areas that haven't been reached before in a while here. Looking so good, we're, man. Nice. We're, kind of, we're right. kind of excited. So, But in order to save our audience from us talking more about diets and such and Teslas, <laughs> uh, we are actually going to talk about real estate today because – you know, we're getting awfully close to the sort of the implementation, right, of all the changes. And uh, I know you've been hearing things. I've been hearing oh, things. Yeah. I just did a webinar, actually, with a very large, uh, we'll call it group of agents, you know, just going over what could happen, what might happen. Um, so I thought, let's do that. You know, let's actually talk about and speculate on what we think is going to happen, Um and maybe have this set things up for like a future live stream, you know, where we'll get agents f- like on the ground who are actually going through and living through this change. Because a number of MLSs have already, a lot of folks have already started making switches yeah. on August 1. Yeah. Right? So it's, they're not even waiting for August 17th. So yeah. a lot of this is already in place. So with that said, what you hearing? What's, yeah, what's, what's I mean, everyone- so – we're like less than a month away from August 17th. Now, I mean, I still think that this is uh, was a tremendously aggressive timeline and I, I I think I've said before on the on the on the pod that you know, they should have uh uh 
they, they should have kind of extended this to the end of the year. Right. But I mean, sure. you know, you got to kick the can down the road here. So the, the, the kind of, I'll, I'll start with an overall arching thing and you can kind of see this right now in the zeitgeist that's going on right now in that. And this is more than like, I think Michael Werger used to say like every year there's a panel at Inman that's like predicts the death of the MLS. Right. And, right. And man, that is just a fever pitch right now. Right. So you have, uh, you know, as we talked about in a couple pods ago, where there's a single person who owns the 16th largest MLS in the country now. And the stated reason is because the association thought this was a good time to sell right. because they're not really, you know, uh, optimistic about the future of MLS. Right. Right. Um, and I, and I hear that from a lot of different circles. It's, and it, it's just bizarre to me. And maybe again, this is a little bit of Stockholm syndrome, right? But I just can't imagine, you know, that, that people think like, oh, the MLS just one day is going to disappear, right? It's just, everything's just going to go on Zillow and, you know, people are going to self upload and, and things like that or, or something. Right. And, it's just, it's just, it is, it is just becoming, I'm hearing more and more circles about more. And this is in the association world, of course, right? That uh, MLSs are, you know, it's, it's just their time has come and it's passed and, you know, but they're going to be looking for something I else. I don't know huh? about that, but I do think there's a real problem for associations. So, um, this so is, is, uh, it, is it that they need the money now? Is there just go, going for a cash grab to? I don't know what they're doing, obviously, because I don't. You know, I haven't talked to any of them, but I'm going to see if I could find this um, because, da, da, da. you know, I'm going to pull these images up and then maybe I'll share it on our amazing YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. Uh, you got to be watching that YouTube channel. Yeah. If, Smash if that not, like button. Exactly. If you're not. Uh, Click on that subscribe. So I want to share. Let me share something. It's either on you. that side or this side. Uh, I don't know exactly. Window. All right. Uh, number four. Okay. Is this it? I don't know what I'm sharing. Uh, okay. Do you see that? Okay. I got it. Yeah. All so right. this cool. was from the webinar that I did, right? And there were like, okay. Wait, how long ago did you do this webinar? This was earlier this week. Okay. So it's recent. All right. As we're recording right now. It was very recent. And basically, the person that was conducting it was basically asked the question of roughly 300 agents, and you can see 188 <clears throat> answered, if you could have the MLS without being a member of NAR, would you still pay for membership to NAR? And as you can see, it's 80-20 no. Right? And, I, and you know, it's not just NAR. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, when we've had people like, uh, you know, Ed Zorn on, he would point out CRMLS California doesn't require realtor membership. Oftentimes the brokers do, and they're oftentimes the associations of other things. So people are joining realtor associations. I don't know about the death of the MLS, but those numbers maybe suggest death of the association. Right. So maybe it's a little whistling through the graveyard right. type of thing, right? Uh, and there's something to really think about. Like, okay, so let let's 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 be let's be truthful, <laughs> the aggressively truthful uh, as we tend to be on this podcast. You and I both know associations have for at least, call it 50 years, probably longer, right? Let's say for at least 50 years have really relied upon the MLS as the main draw as to why people are joining them, I, right? That's fair. Once you no longer have that, why would people join the association? So I asked the 20% who said I would still pay, right? right? I would still join the association. The number one answer that was provided was training and education. Okay. And I'm like, what is the association training and educating on? Right. right. Because let me put it this way. I don't think any agent is going to pay the association to get code of ethics training. Right. Right. So they're probably getting trained on business, like how to make money, how to market, how to, right? What's the broker doing? Right. 
And then just think about the fact that we have these coaches now in our industry. Some of them do a great job. Like, what, what are you paying the association for? So I think there is, and then the number two, so the first one's education and training. The second one was like lobbying, right? Problem with that is how many locals do lobbying? Right. I mean, some associations more than others. I'm sure the of course. SFAR has got a huge the lobbying big ones. organization. SFAR yeah. has, has a very strong lobbying practice. HAR has a lobbying practice, yeah. right? The big ones do, but there are like 1,200 locals, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, I go back to like, and I think it was Ohan and Timmy, yeah. you know, yeah. a friend of ours uh, that had said that, you know, he's got a lot of like, you know, friends that are uh, in, you know, legal lawyers or or doctors or psychiatrists and those yeah. kind of things. And like, you know, there is a, a fraternity, you know, a, a thing where a lot of professionals like to have be part of something Sure. that is to kind of give back and go to the greater good of, you know, either new people coming on sure. or uh, mentorship or, or just that, that community, that culture that goes forward. And that's, you know, he, he's always, when he's heard that and, I think it was on a previous podcast we talked about that. He just, I remember him approaching me and just saying to push back a bit because there is something there that maybe we can't, you know, exactly say, well, it's this, this, and this, and this is what I, what I get value. It's more that I'm part of something yeah, and um, I want to make that better. Yeah, And I think there's something, I think there is a lot to that. And I think it's, I think it's stronger than, than what you and I kind of think of it is. Um, you know, who know, but you know, nowadays, you know, you know, Gen Z especially has got really a lot of different ways to look at things than, than the rest of us. Right. So well, well, here's the other side of that. Like, of course there's a social um, benefit, right? Like the community aspect of it. But at that point, what really is the difference between a local realtor association and the Lions Club? Sure. Right, it's just a bunch of people getting together, right, to hang out. And again, it's nice that you're in the same industry, so you could kind of, right, you understand each other. I mean, I totally see that. Well, There's I mean, it's, it's, I it. mean, the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, the, you know, a lot of times those are business professionals. It's a networking thing, also. Same um, thing with real estate, right? Yeah, but but I think I mean to me, there it's more what you want to really kind of compare it to is more uh, the AMA or the uh, I guess right. the bar. Or the well, no, you know, so, these so kind of actually that's exactly a great great point that you're bringing up. The bar is required. Okay, right, because that's part the courts like you have to pass the bar. I don't know if the bar association is required actually, but now that I think about it, AMA on the other hand is not required by law, right? So guess how, what percentage of doctors belong to the AMA? Yeah, I don't know. It's about thirty percent. Right. Okay. Right, so maybe we're going to see the same thing. About thirty percent of agents will belong to the local association, and be yeah. And does that does that thirty percent of agents that would belong to those things correlate with the thirty percent agents that are doing actual business, right, or the five percent, or ten percent, or whatever it is? Probably not. Right. Don't you think? I mean, I don't know about you, but when I think about like the top producing agents that I know, man, they're too busy to have dinner with their kids. Right, they're working. They're working their asses off. So I don't right. know that a lot of them would be like, "Let me go hang out." Uh, you know, this Thursday afternoon down at the association office to hear to hang out. And do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I don't know if I see that. Right now, this is something for association people to answer. Right. I mean, I'm sure they're pissed off listening to us right now, or they should alternately maybe are terrified because, like, okay, you need to prov provide some value, right? And pro proving value, and this is God, this is a thing my entire career, right? Everyone's going to associate and be like, you need to communicate your value. You need to communicate your value, right? And if you remember my 2016 um, CMLS presentation <laughs> in Las Vegas, right? Like one of the things I was pointing out is, look, uh, I know agents who like put their association's email Right into their Google, like have a rule that says if it's coming from the association, skip the inbox and immediately trash it. They put the phone oh, number of the association to the phone so they know not to answer it. Right, and the association <laughs> sitting there like we need to communicate our value proposition to our membership better. I'm like, no, 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 they're just not that into you. 
and you're acting like a stalker like boyfriend like stop <laughs> they just don't like you that much <laughs> yeah so it's I something mean, to think about now that the MLS is going to get disrupted now that all these things are happening I think associations have to really think about what's going to get someone to pay you is this sense of urgency because people are thinking now that it is really it does make sense for those things, two things to be divided because I of think so. all these legal, legal issues. So that's kind of pushed the things. I mean, I'm not entirely sure about the motivation. I think a part of the motivation, quite frankly, is that the local leadership uh, feels, um, I don't know if betrayed is the right word, but they feel like uh, left kind of their, they were left out to, you know, to dry. Yeah, that's, right? that's another thing I would say. I mean, you know, along with like, they think MLSs are doomed, but there's a lot of bad sentiment. I think there was an article about this and. Uh, I don't know if it was real estate news or Inman about how realtors are pissed at NAR. Right. Right. Um, right. And I'm not sure if that's warranted, but I mean, it's a set of what it is warranted in the fact that I guess NAR didn't do a good job of, of communicating why this was a good thing or the spin of it or spinning it that way if it wasn't yeah. right. So, or um, what, what have we been pounding our, our you know, podium here for the last four years, right? It's like, and you need to do a better job communicating to local yeah. leadership how big a threat this is. So, yeah, I mean, look, is it warranted? I don't know, but it's emotionally understandable, right? When you've had NAR for four years tell you, they've got nothing to worry about. We're going to win this. We've got nothing to worry about. Don't worry your pretty little head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, actually, we're getting our ass kicks. We're going to settle, right? And then, boom, here's a whole bunch of changes. And then you're hung out to dry. Like, yeah, of course, there's going to be some bad feelings. Right? And, and, you know, again, it's the worst market, you know, that's been in a of long course. time, right? So, of course. So um, it's like a double whammy. So it's, look, yeah, I mean, it's a perfect storm, really, for all yeah. this crap. So the one thing that I do think is locals and even states are going to have to figure something out, like, very quickly. The state one is real interesting because I think you want to talk about CAR. Um, folding, yeah. right? And they made changes to the forms, you know, to kind of align with the DOJ's concerns were, right? And I'm like, okay, maybe that's okay, but I don't know, right? Like we talked about this recently. I don't know if I'm a broker, I want to use any state asso realtor association form. Well, it's, it's not, it, you know, those forms are like, you know, they're part of a network effect, right? Where, you know, if everybody is using them that, you know, if you have like a, just a one-off, people are, are going to be approach that with a little bit of a, a you know, sure. skepticism, right? So Sure. And, but here's uh, the thing, maybe if you're a tiny broker, then you don't care because you don't have any assets. But if you're EXP, I mean, EXP already built their own, so it doesn't matter. But you know what I mean? Like if you're Compass, if you're anywhere, if you're Redfin, if you're any of the brokers who got sued by some lawyer because they think you have all this money, right? Like, if you use a state association form, you're like, I'm part of this conspiracy now, right? If I get sued. I don't... So, state associations are going to have a real problem with value proposition as well, right? Because think about it. Why do people join the state association? Well, the true answer is, number one, because you have to. Because when you join the local, you join the state and national at the same right. time. And you join the local because you need access to the MLS. Okay, leave them to the side. Right, leave them to the side. Let's talk about the twenty percent who are like, I see value. Right? Okay, cool. You see value in the local association because it provides education and training and some community. Right? What does the state do for you? Right. Well, I guess to me that would be more in the lobbying kind of effort statewide right? Of things. Right? Yeah. Right. But then it's like, why do you have a state association when you have state RPAC? Can't you just donate to the PAC? There's 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 a storm coming, and I don't know if people are really ready for it. But I'll do that. All right. Well, storms storms are you know it, it, it's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity of looking at new ways of kind of what kind of value propositions you can add or or mm -hmm. things here. I mean, it is it is you know we're just at the beginning of this. I was I did an interview with um, a gentleman who works over at Lone Wolf, and and you know part of his whole purview is the forms part of it. Right. And yeah. just talking about like, you know, what, 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 you know, as we always said, like the forms vendors are going to have a tough time. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and he, you know, I was telling him, listen, I mean, this, this, just get ready for version three, version four, version five, right? So this shit isn't over with yet, right? Nope. So we'll see that. So switching topics a bit, I want to relay the other poll result that I thought was fascinating. So on this webinar, again, it wasn't me. It was like whoever was putting it on asked, as a listing agent, do you plan to offer buyer compensation outside of the MLS? And 44% said yes. 56% said no. Describe Okay, that, that, that question could be interpreted in a couple different ways though, right? I mean- What do you mean? You have to now offer buyer's compensation outside the MLS. Or you could just not offer buyer compensation. As a listing agent. Okay, right. well, is it, the, but as We're a listing about, agent- Right. We're talking about the offer the, of compensation. We're not talking no, about concessions. But, right. But the listing agent doesn't yeah. make, it doesn't make that decision. Yeah, they do. No, the, the seller does. No, that's concessions. This is, you talk to the seller, right? You say, hey, here's, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. But you can tell the seller, we should offer compensation, not concession, buyer agent compensation. We just can't do it in the MLS. If the seller's like, yeah, you know, if that's what's going to take to market my home, go do it. Then you go offer compensation outside of the MLS, right? And I know it's going to make Ed Zorn pull his hair out because he's like, don't share commissions. Don't share commissions. I'm just telling you, like, this is 44% of those agents said, I plan on sharing commissions outside the MLS. Right. I found that absolutely fascinating. Well, this goes back to all of our, I mean, it, it, it goes back to all of our kind of steering conversations because what I'm seeing, you know, agents post on, you know, Instagram and like these reposts of TikTok is, you know, here's what you say to your sellers, right? right? And you have to do that because you're a fiduciary and you have to let them know what the consequences of these decisions are. And then they go yeah. into... Listen, if we don't offer if we don't offer anything, we might, you know, preclude a set of buyers. Right. We want to see all offers, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, it again, like a lot of this stuff, it's been touted as pro-consumer, but at the same time, um, it, it really just opens up a Pandora's box of of just problems too, right? And and we've talked about it in in length about, you know steering but you know there are some good points about the fiduciary part too and how do you sure. walk that line i mean it's just a it's tough it's so difficult to get there and i'm 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 you know uh, to the doj you know but, but be careful what you wish for man um because these second order consequences is, as you've always said i mean it's 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 gonna it's gonna be a problematic sometimes you think so i don't know like if 44% of agents, so here's what I'm wondering about. Because again, the number was just right. 44%, right? So we'll call it 60-40, right? So two thirds, basically, of agents are not going to offer compensation, right? Oh, it's no, it's not two thirds. It's, uh, yeah, it's not. 60-40. Yeah, 60-40. For 40% will. Okay. I think we're about to find out how important that is for a transaction. Right. Right. In other words, like, and you and I both know some technology will be built up where you can find out what compensation is being offered. Right. It just won't be the MLS. Okay. And again, MLS is going to try and do it through concessions. I'm saying these are like literally offers of compensation. I'm going to share my commission with you kind of deal. Okay. If it turns out that the 40% who are offering compensation are seeing, let's say, what's a material number? 25% more showings. Yeah, I would say probably like 10 or 15 is still material, right? 10 or 10% 10 more showings than the 60% who aren't. We're going to find that out pretty quick, right? And brokers and agents are going to communicate this to each other pretty quick. And then the 60% are now going to have to go, I have to now tell my client, if we don't do this, it's 10% fewer showings. Yeah. What then? <laughs> yeah. What then? What do we do then? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I do get, I do get some of the, I do start to understand some of the people that have been so against this, 
you know, this settlement for, for a lot of different reasons. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that, you know, it's sometimes it's like, you know, you want to rely on that Adam Smith's invisible hand in the market to make things go, but it's just such a weird situation we have in, in real estate for, for, for this. And, you know, I, and the other thing is it could go the exact opposite way, right? Where it's like, That's okay, right. Okay, no, no we're not doing we're not doing that right. anymore. Okay, right. so what does that happen? It takes a whole bunch of buyers out of the market. I don't know about you, but I've never been in a position when I'm buying a house. You know, well, maybe the last one, okay, but I mean, yeah. where I had extra money to, you know, I had any money to besides all that I scrimped and saved for for the down payment to pay somebody else, right? Sure. But the system was set up in such a way that unless I went to Fizbo's, where it was a limited market, I had no other choice but to go to organize real estate and make it happen. And, mm -hmm. and if I have to go, you know, so, so that, that's the thing. It's like, that's the disruption here is that, um, are there going to be new things that are outside of like the existing organized real estate model that will, you know, are for these buyers that are going in there where you're, you're going in there with a partnership with a bank and you guys share in the, um, you know, the, uh, the asset that's, that is basically rising later on and, and they get a, a portion. I mean, there could be all different models. I mean, that's the thing. It's like they've come up with all those credit default swaps and all this other financial instruments for, for wall street to fake and make money mm -hmm. at, and all these kind of things, these, these, these financial instruments, where's the geniuses now to kind of like, look at all the different things on the table and go, well, I guess we've seen how badly those can turn out, but is there a financial <laughs> instrument that they can think up of like a buyer doesn't have a down payment, but they've got to, you know, they've, they've still, they got to have some money to kind of get the transaction done. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's just, and, and this is, again, it's, it's like everything else is we got to ship this thing and we'll see what happens, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll no, see what happens. Fascinating. Uh, again, yeah. just based on that poll response, I'm saying, Ed Zorn, CRMLS, they're going to do all this, whatever, concessions, don't do, 40% of agents are going to put commissions, put compensation off the MLS. Yeah, I guess if, I guess what happens there is if, if they're successful, right, then, and, and they the make it easy. And the other 6%, guess what? They're going to start offering compensation off the MLS. Or, but it could go the other way. If, if Ed and, the, and these others that are doing this, if they yeah. make it successful yeah. um, and easy to do, then yeah. it might be, it might go the other way. It might, oh, you know, the concession stuff is actually working for everybody else. We'll go over there, right? Okay. So I guess that's, that's their bet, right? Um, I guess. But, you know, I differ with Ed. I think if you were to put concessions field and put 2.5% concessions, I think you get sued. Yeah. I, I, I don't, don't see how that's any different from a steering impact perspective than 2.5% right. co commission and 2.5% co you know, concessions. Right. Like we, we could stop playing word games with ourselves too. Remember when I beat up on the lawyers for playing these fucking word games? Like it's not really allowed. You know, it's just like – Get, get, get out of here. Yeah. Like the average person reading this settlement says, oh, so compensation is allowed off the MLS. Same thing. You can't be like, oh, two and a half percent concessions. Ah, wink, wink. Like, come on, guys. You know, yeah. we all know what the hell's going on. So if you do that, you're going to get sued. Well, and I think know, the latest inman, Ed actually said, only do that for like FHA. If you have like a $2 million home, you know, in the hills of San Diego, don't put anything. Just say willing to consider concessions. Right. right? So we'll, see. well, I guess VA would fall in that as well because they've made a switch to say that they're, you know, whatever market right. practices are. Right. But the other thing is like, it brings me back to this conversation I was just having and it goes upon like, and again, I think of everything in software too, right? So <laughs> defaults, what, what are your defaults? Right. And, you know, there was a, a discussion about how, before you could complete the signing of a form, you had to put your email address in to kind of be registered. And what was happening is people weren't filling that out. And then therefore it wasn't getting the, the, the form wasn't getting done. Um, or another thing was you wanted to go in a certain order, like, okay, this signer first, this signer second, this signer third gets it. Well, that just caused a lot of support issues where where's my form? Well, this guy hasn't signed it. Right. Well, okay. Just all go out at the same time. 
Support issues drop to zero. Everybody's still happy. You make it an option. Yeah. The default has been right now that every you know it's it's cooperation compensation, right? Can they come up with a new default like concessions or something that's within the workflow of of listing input or whatever that makes it again simple um, and easy so that you know you're not really thinking about it. But then again, but then like you said, if it's another field that has only thing. four different consonants and and one <laughs> vowel in the in the word, and you put it. What what are we, is it? Just a shell game we're playing here? I, I don't game. know. It is a shell yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. So all right. So we'll see what happens with that. Another one because you mentioned defaults. It brought to mind. Um, there's a fascinating little Twitter war going on. <laughs> Not war. War is wrong. Debate discussion. Right. Where. Uh, we we really need to get her on this on this program, Melissa. So, Melissa, yeah, oh, Melissa I, Savenko. I, so like, hey, Melissa, she's, she's so she's, she's a so great good. she's I, a great Twitter follower, and she's absolutely just so smart. She's an attorney absolutely. too, or, or yeah, I know. She's like, yeah. she's like you. She's a recovering attorney. Or something. <laughs> I think she's an actual attorney, but anyway. So the whole thing was okay. One of the big things with this switchover is agents now have to get this buyer agent agreement signed. Right before they can show home, before they can do anything real, and the idea is that you would have to negotiate your fee with this buyer before having really done a whole lot. Right? <laughs> <clears throat> Where she took it was not that the buyer has signed this agreement; it's on the hook for two and a half percent, three percent, whatever it is. Right. They're going to tell their buyer agent, don't show me any homes that don't offer concessions because I can't afford to pay you. So her whole thing was like buyers are going to tell their agents, don't show me any homes, right? That don't offer because I can't so afford to So it's like a self-steering kind of thing, Correct. right? And this is that's this awesome. Is the, yeah. This is the Voldemort. This now, you yeah. know, the, the Boston Voldemort's, you know, sort of training and coaching and telling the the world, right? I'm just like, okay, there's two two things here. So my first thing on Twitter was, okay, so as an agent, what do you do when the buyer now comes to you and says, listen, uh, I just found this house. It's awesome. I, this is our dream house. I want it. They're not offering enough. So I need you to let me out of my agreement so I could go work with someone cheaper. What do you do? Right. <laughs> so Eric Stegman's out there saying, Fuck that. We have an agreement. You know, it's not a contract. I'm like, hey, yo, bro, I get it, man. I get where you're coming from. Having said that, imagine being a buyer agent and telling your buyer, nope, <laughs> that led you out of this contract. And in fact, well, I'm going to call my lawyers and <laughs> serve you with papers like, uh, you ain't going to have, like, that, that guy is not going to complete a transaction with you, number one. And number two, you can forget all of that guy's friends and family from ever calling you, right? Like, really? <laughs> is that what's going to happen? But, 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 but look at it from the other the angle, and I think sure. this is where Melissa is coming from. Okay, um, I've spent four weeks with you. We've yep. gone and se- we've gone and s- seen, uh, let's say, twenty houses. Yep. Um, you've been a pain in the ass. Yep. Maybe she hasn't. Re- maybe she hasn't expressed that to them. But you know, there I are bad you, clients. There are I bought, bad I bought you three. Yep. You know. Yep. Three, um, you know, lunches that I had to listen to you droll on about whatever, but I'm, this is part of the process that I did. Yep. Um, I, you know, I even showed you, I, you know, they, you went way and above. Absolutely. And, now, yep. and this is what the, what agents have to deal with every fucking day. Every now, day. Right? No right? question. Yeah. And, and now this, 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 this person is going to say, yeah, I want out of it because this guy is not, I mean, it's it, to be in a, an agent, like in Melissa's shoes there, it's like. You mother, exactly. Ever right? Exactly. You want me to what? Exactly. Um, now, so I think so, but in there, I think it, it it tells the story. Like I think in some instances, listen, if it's like a three day old client, go with God. Sure. Right. I understand what you're saying. You know, I, you know, if that's if that's what's going to happen, whatever. Okay. But so I, I don't think there's a yes no answer here. I think it's a depends no. answer. If it's the pain in the ass client you've been working with for for forty days and showing a bunch of houses, then you're paying the ass. No, man, you're paying me, right? I, I didn't go through this for whatever. But if it's like somebody you've been with like two or three days and whatever, you know that's that's CODB, baby, right? I mean, uh, but it's it's it is a tough thing though. 
It's really hard. And again, this is one of those things that we just haven't thought about, right? So like, so there's that issue. The other thing that I keep thinking about is like, Melissa and others, you know, the assumption is the buyer is on the hook for two and a half, three percent. So therefore, the buyer will tell me not to show. I'm like, you haven't done any work for me yet. Right. And you're going to get me to commit to two and a half percent. Really? How's that going to go? Well, I mean, again, here's how it's going to go. If if you're if you're an actual kick-ass buyer agent, right? Is you're going to have that rep. Well, this is why you're paying me because I get offers accepted. I get. I mean, you have to. I mean, it's like sure. like a listing presentation. They have to like. No, if you just go up there and show them a piece of form and say, "Please sign this first. No, right. there's got it. They didn't have to do this before, but they're going to have to have a way of of demonstrating their value before anything to say, "I'm worth this." Same thing as a seller agent does with a with a seller client with a CMA and a, right. a listing presentation, right? So, um, and that's so what's interesting that? to me about the touring stuff, right? Where you sure. have to have something signed. So, I guess there can be muted agreements that are just for showing a house. Um, versus a full-on like compensation type of thing, or maybe a, a, I mean, a twenty-four yeah. hour kind of yeah, maybe. And Zillow uh, tried to do that, and uh, Greg Robertson yeah. beat up on them for <laughs> trying to be nice and be like, "Here's a showing agreement you could use." You know? Well, I mean, it was you know a lot of states said it was illegal, so it wasn't just Greg <laughs> Robertson. But you know, you know, here's another thing that I just read on Twitter where Greg Fisher was saying that the state of Colorado is saying, "No, you don't have to have." That's right. Right. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, when, when how the is state- the state? Yeah. The when state, the state is now form, telling the DOJ to go, you know, yeah. pound sand. It's, they're not telling the DOJ. Like, keep in mind, the settlement is not with the DOJ. The well, settlement okay. is with a bunch of plaintiffs' lawyers, right? So right. no, it does. If that's a state form, Colorado, like nothing changes really. Like just go, go forth. I mean, there's still some changes, but um, so like it's it's an interesting thing. Like okay, so let's play that out. You're a badass buyer agent, okay? Say so here's whatever. I get my offers accepted. I'm the, I'm the shit. So, Rob, you should sign on the dotted line for 3%. I go, Greg, you're, you're a badass. I just can't afford it. Now, this what is after they found a house or during the process? We're touring because we yeah. got to sign this before the tour, right? All right. So, so okay. So, this is before you've been hired. Right. Like, right. You do the presentation. You're like, I'm badass. Here's my track record. I'm like, hey, you know what? You're, you're totally right, man. You are absolutely badass. And you probably deserve 3%. I just don't have it. I can't afford it. Do you know anyone that's cheaper? Right. We know that's going to happen, right? If if the buyer agents are actually doing the the presentation, doing the whole, right? And I think what everyone's terrified is that the buyer is going to push back. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, fine, you're a badass, but I'm buying a million dollars. You're telling me you're worth 30 fucking thousand dollars? Well, it's going to be, I mean, there, there probably is going to be more... Uh, you know, haggling than there was before, right? No now doubt. that this is no doubt. whatever. So it's good. No and that, that could go back to what Melissa's point. No if, 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 if a buyer wants to leave after this, you might say, you know what? I get it. I know we have an agreement that says it's two and a half percent, but I tell you what, um, if we agree, just give me a thousand dollars for my, my time and effort for the past thing, go with God. Right. right. I mean, there's, there's varying things that there's I think can happen. There's varying, right. but. And that's the same but, thing with like, if I'm a, if I'm a badass buyer agent and this buyer says to me, I can't, whatever. It's like, listen, you know, most, uh, you know, I would say at this point, most of the people are, are offering to, you know, as a concession to, to cover the buyer's agent's cost. Um, so, uh, so I, you know, this is, this may be an issue, but I don't think it's going to be an issue in your case, but I tell you what, um, you know, we'll have a handshake agreement that if there is something that comes up, we'll work something out together. You can't have a handshake agreement is what well, I'm saying. you know, I don't, I don't know if this handshake agreement is the right way of putting it. But I mean, right. you know, just, you know, again, it's all about trust, right? So it's like. Right. But then yeah. we just met. <laughs> yeah. How much trust could there be? It's not like we've been working together for six months, right? We just met. And the first thing you want me to do is sign an agreement. That puts me on the hook for well, thirty grand. No, I mean, grand. I, I could. You know what I could do for you, sir, is that I could recommend some other agents. So I, you yes, know, actually, please do. here's here's the problem. I, I don't I'm even think I could recommend. Agent. Yeah, I, I, because here's what's going to happen to you is like, you know, 
Yeah, I'm very get good at getting. Yeah, you're you're going to rake all the coals. You're going to get raped. You're not going to win any deals. You're not going to win any, you know, it's right. so, I mean, I think I can, in the end of the day here, provide. No, I get you know, it. My, no, I show get my it. value. And again, well, that's where agents are thinking. Where agents' mind is, is the, is the buyer saying, well, you're not worth it. That, that's not what I'm, like, fine. And now you, you have the scripts, right? Tom Ferry's got that script handled for you. Great. Good for you. I'm saying the agent, the buyer goes, you're worth it. I'm not challenging your value. I'm simply saying I can't afford it. Right. Now what? If at that point you say, don't worry, concessions. <laughs> the seller's going to pay me through concessions. Guess what? <laughs> yeah. Steering, motherfucker. Guess what? You know what I mean? like, yeah, I mean, well, again, you know, the other part of that <laughs> is, you know, th- that there's another thing here, right? So if you're a badass buyer agent, right? Um, a lot of times agents that are good at what they're doing is they're good. The reason they're good at, good at what they're doing, and this I think is is universal for anybody, is they know when to say no. Yes, agreed. Right. So it's like agreed. okay, well, if you can't afford, you know, this. Right. Um, I, I would have to make a termination of like, um, are you pre-approved? Right. 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 What What is your fine? I mean, is this going to be a problem? Right. And they're like, should I just let you go? Because you know what? Go to another agent because this is going to be a fucking nightmare for you. Right. And I'm just not, I mean, so, so I think you, again, it's a, it's a, it's on a per basis. Right. Sometimes you're going to say, no, listen, they're all cash. That's all they have. Um, oh, there's something I can work here. Right. I think, you know, you know, they're going to be more willing to take a risk with, with that than they are. Uh, anything else, right? So it's just sure. it's gonna be it's gonna be te- depend on the situation. But of in some cases, the agent might just decide, yeah, you're a nightmare already. Goodbye. I'm I'm on to the next one. How is it a nightmare? Uh, the guy okay, says, well, no, you're worth every penny. I just can't afford it." Yeah. Okay. Let me take a look at your. Uh, let me take a look at your paperwork. Okay. You know, you're only pre-approved for this much, and the average home is actually. You know, well, that's a different. That's a whole Hold different. on, no. I okay, mean, you, but, you have to look at all those kind of things. No, I and you just bought a new car you're, last you're, you're month. You're confusing things. If the guy's too poor, his pre-approval is three hundred, and the average price is six hundred. He could be like, "I will pay you ten percent com- commissions." Doesn't matter because he can't buy a house. Right. I mean, again, right? I, 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 so again, we're talking about a guy all... who's pre-approved. He is able to buy a house. Okay. Okay. He's just right. saying, "Greg, you're you're amazing. You've got all the value. I just can't afford it." Yeah. And I don't think the industry, as of now, has figured out how to answer that one. Yeah. Is the answer, okay, no problem. I get you. I have this colleague who's nowhere near as badass, who's quite incompetent, but he's cheap. Is that how we're going to approach this? No, I don't think, I don't think that's it. Right, we're not going to do that, right? So I mean, we're going to say, Melissa he's competent. Said this in one of, he's not as good as me. He's I think competent, Melissa, though. Melissa had this in one of her tweets where it's like, <laughs> maybe that's where the the dollar per hour agents come in, right? The, the, f- the fee agents come in. But I, but I, I mean, again, <laughs> you know, we'll see what happens. I'll say, as far as I know, I haven't heard this conversation. Like, okay, so what do you do when the guy's like, hey, man, I, I grant you, like, I'm not questioning your value. I'm just telling you I don't have it. And I can't Rob, afford to put as myself part of own. my services to you, I'm going right. to make sure you have enough to pay me. That's my job. You don't worry about uh, that. Mm, okay. Okay. I like that. I like right. that. Now you're now what you're doing there is skating you're close giving, to steering. Well, yeah, no, it's it's my job to, you know. <laughs> it's my job to make that, you know, Rob, don't worry about that. Don't worry about my compensation. That's my problem. Right. right? Okay. I'm gonna make sure that we get you in a house that you love. Right. That you know, you won't, right. you, that you're, that we're, that you can afford. That's right. my job. Don't worry about and this. And this brings us back to uh, a post I wrote and then a conversation that I had a couple months ago, which is the Colorado form has a selection where it says the buyer will not be responsible. The buyer's not on the hook for whatever composition agreed to. And I've said, I that think that doesn't this preclude the, the broker from having a, a separate agreement to have them sign. What do you mean? Oh, there could be a separate compensation agreement that the that the okay, buyer but, has to sign with the brokerage. Well, not in Colorado. Why not? Because it's I can form. have I can have a separate agreement that says, you know, that uh, you pay me for mileage. I don't you know. You can have any. You can it have just multiple to, yeah, agreements. No, if I, you want I get to. it. I'm saying it, it has to get approved by the state commission in Colorado, right? 
So I'm just saying like the option is that we're going to agree on 2.5%, but you're not on the hook. That's what I recommended because of this. Because then the answer should be, to your point, you know what? I know I'm expensive. I'm blah, blah. But my goal here is to help you get into the home of your dreams. So let's do it this way. We're going to agree on 2.5% because legally, that's, I can't get paid more than that. right? So we're going to agree on that. But we're going to check this box here that says, you are not on the hook. You are never going to pay me. And we'll figure this out. Yeah, I okay. think that's the way it's going to have to go. Yeah. Because the, okay. otherwise, like I said, I'm trying to imagine the conversations like, Oh, you can't afford me, but you want to use an agent. I have this cousin who's incompetent and a moron, but he's cheap. So let's use him. Like, I don't think he's going to do that. Right? That's just not a conversation. Yeah. Right? So yeah. having said all of this, I mean, one of the things I brought up, I'll tell you where the local, the state associations and some of these could actually have a real impact. Start doing pro bono, right? And then start making it possible for agents to do pro bono. Yeah, right. no one is going to love to hear that. Nobody. Well, I mean, do you want a great rep? Like, could you imagine being like you a? You can't have a great rep a if you're not getting paid for. A while. I mean, your rep, you're going to have a job. No, no. no what if- I mean is, what I mean is, you say to the agent, you know what, this client, you love this client, and give us the application. And if we approve, like, oh, this is a deserving, like the pre-approvals coming through, it's a veteran, whatever. Why don't you do it in pro bono? We, the company, will pay you the agent. Oh, I see what you're saying. So right. every now and then, I think that's every done already. No, I think that's I done think, already. Who? No, I mean, I, I can tell you when I bought my first condo, my uh, agent um, right. was the mother of one of my business partners. She right. threw in her thing to, to help me out with it, whatever, because I was a friend. I know, but then she and, made no money helping you. Correct. Right, which is like, look, any agent could do that. What we're talking about is where the company says to the agent. Oh, the, the brokerage. The broker or the, fr- oh, or the okay. team or the realtor association says, if you have a deserving buyer. There ain't no money, there ain't no money for that. <laughs> there is today. Look, man, when realtor associations have money to spend their realtor prom, they got money to do pro bono. Yeah, don't, I mean, I think isn't even. that what our pack is about, or the the realtor no, fund, or, or those lobbying. things, or our pack is strictly for lobbying. Okay, well, you know, uh, the, the, I think I, I do see associations putting on different events for you know um, underrepresented homeowners, things like that. I, I mean, well, I'm, yes. I'm almost yeah, cut that shit out because that's a waste of fucking time. All you want to do is party. How about you take the funding for that and then you tell your members? Well, that's bring the, us the a, party is how they get the funding, right? So, oh, make it a fundraiser. Yeah, fine. That, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Doing it as a fundraiser is fine. But then yeah. take the funds and go to your members. And be like, bring bring this deserving. No, I think there are associations that have exactly what you're talking about out there. I, yeah, I hey, if you are an association that you have this program, I want to know about it because I haven't. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah, never. I'm right. I'm fairly positive there's, there's I, okay. associations. I would love know. to see it. I mean, yeah. I haven't, for that matter, I don't even think associations, do associations get involved in down payment assistance? I don't think so. I don't know of a single one that does. Well, I know there's, you know, if you talk, putting it that way, um, many MLSs have partnered with DPR, down payment resource. Right, right. They've partnered with, because DPR is just getting government dollars to do it. Well, they're they're putting in, in contact with a list of possible, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a, a good thing. No, it's, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. What I'm saying yeah. is, is the Realtor Association a source of that funding? I don't think so. No, not, I don't think. I think right? in some, like I said, I know there's got to be programs out there. I've, I've, I'm fairly confident seeing on some websites, hey, okay. come to this thing and we're raising okay. and having yeah, a fund for. Way. Who's the most innovative Realtor leader you know? <sighs> Association. God, I'm, not going, I'm, not, I'm not going on record with that. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'll... I'll I, <laughs> I'll go with, I think Emily Chenevert is one of the most innovative realtor leaders I know. She's in Austin. Hey, Emily, consider launching that program to allow your people, your members to offer pro bono. If you have this program already, please let me know about it so we could bring you out to talk about that program. Right, right. right. If you're a brokerage, if you're Redfin, if you're anywhere, if you're EXP, consider doing something like that, right? Because I think the PR benefit would be huge, it would be so so big, right? 
And it kind of does away with some of this. Agents are greedy, selfish bastards. Or like, I think it could really help. But in any event, I can't believe we spent an hour just <laughs> bullshitting. Uh, I, as we mentioned, I think what we wanted to do is kind of get our thoughts out here. And once some of these changes have taken place, I think it would be fun to do like a live stream and bring on, allow agents and brokers to kind of tell us like, here's what we're seeing. Here's what our experience is. You know, here's what's actually happening on the ground with these new rules and new forms and new whatevers, you know. So uh, please keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, um, thanks for listening. If you have disagreements, you know where to find us. <laughs> if you have agreements, you know where to find us. And uh, if you're on YouTube, please put comments below. We'll try and get to them and uh, see see what you all said. Oh, the comments right. fields have been very active, especially on uh, in our conversation with Wendy and mm -hmm. um, Doug. Yep, yep. Yeah, that was yep. that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, right. everybody. Thank you. Ciao.